guys very much for being here. My name is Emily Wright. I am the uh, Girls Ministries Coordinator for the network. Um, and the title of today is No Stinking Way, Discovering Resources That Are Right Underneath Your Nose. And I'm so excited that we do have at least one guy here today because this is not just about girls' ministries. It is about ministry to girls and families in your church, but not just about girls' ministries. Um, I've had the pleasure of being the girls' ministries director for almost a year. Um, and in that time, I've been invited to several different churches to do trainings. Um, usually those trainings are on girls' clubs, so rainbows, stars, daisies, prims, that kind of thing. Um, but my favorite part of the training is what I'm going to actually be sharing with you guys today. That is all the resources that the National Girls Ministries Department has that have nothing to do with girls' clubs. How many of you here... Um, in this room or that are listening to this recording here, have girls in your church between the ages of birth and 18. <laughs> like you have girls that attend your church on Sunday morning, whether it be for Sunday school or kids church or whatever, hopefully that's all of you. Um, and so basically what my hope is that you will leave here with resources for, your, for, the, for the families and the girls in your church. Come on in. Um, regardless of whether you have girls clubs. So if you came here thinking it was all about girls clubs, or if you thought that when you came in and saw the website on the screen, this is not what this is about. This is about all the resources that we have. The reason that I titled this workshop, or this lab, No Stinking Way, is because back in February, when I first came into this position, I got to go to the national office in Springfield, and they spent probably two hours going over the Girls Ministries website with us, and all of the resources I'm gonna show you, and I left there going, no stinking way. Like, I had been in Girls Ministries for seven years, and I had no idea these resources were out there. So a lot of what we're gonna be doing today is just showing you what's on the website. The majority of the resources I'm gonna show you are completely free, which, yay, all of our budget's like free, right? Yeah, I know my budget's like free. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I've given you today on your seat. Um, are three brochures. I don't have like a list of notes, but I have three brochures. One of them is my contact card. Um, on there, please feel free if you have any questions. It does not have to be about clubs. If you have questions about how to reach girls in your church, we live in a generation and in a culture where everybody is thrown together. They are thrown together, boys and girls, things are mixed, gender lines are crossed, and it's okay. That's not okay. But in our culture, they think it's okay. Our girls need to have speci gender-specific discipleship. They need to learn how to be girls. They need to learn that God created them to be unique and to be special. That God created women specifically. Now, Girls Ministries is an avenue to do that. And when I say girls' ministries, I'm not talking impact girls' clubs. I'm talking ministry to girls. So on is my contact card. My contact card, you guys have that. My cell phone number, my email, my Twitter, my Facebook, all of that is on there. If you have any questions or if you are just rocking something at your church in ministry to girls, I would love to hear about it. We also have a Girls Ministries Facebook page. Um, it's facebook.com backslash nwgirlsministries. Um, and if you'll go there, we post things that are up and coming. Some of the resources I'm going to show you, we post when those are updated. Um, we also, just when we have an event coming up, if we have a training coming to your area, um, which I'll talk about more in just a little bit. Also, um, our girls camp. We do a camp just for girls. Kids camp is great. I take kids to kids camp every year. I love kids camp. But there is a different environment when girls are able to be with just girls and be themselves. And we might think that a third grade girl is not concerned if there's boys around, but they are. Our kids are growing up way too fast. And to give our girls a chance to just be girls is what Girls Camp is all about. At Girls Camp, we have fun, we worship the Lord, we spend time together. It is an absolute blast for your girls and for us that are involved. Girls Camp, um, I got the question a lot this week, can leaders come? Yes, please. 
please bring your leaders. Um, uh, we recommend about one leader to at least every eight girls. We can do more than that. That's perfectly fine. More leaders to girls because a lot of leaders kind of hear about this and want to come. Um, girls camp this year for 2014 is going to be at Double K um, Retreat, which is in Easton, which on 90 is just this side of Cleella. It's a little camp kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's absolutely the most adorable camp. And we had so much fun there last year. Um, and it is June 26 or 28 this year. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, so I encourage you, you can bring any girls you want that are going to third through seventh grade next fall. So if you have girls in your church, if you have girls in your community you've been trying to reach, you'd be surprised how many parents and grandparents are looking for things to send their kids to. We get phone calls from, at our church, hey, people don't even go to our church. Hey, does your church send kids to a, to a kids camp? And we get random kids coming to kids camp with us because especially grandparents want to make sure that their kid, their grandkids are taken care of. So put the information out there. We'd love to have your church, your group, have your girls invite their friends. Um, it is a just an amazingly fun experience just for girls. So that information is on that card that I gave you guys today. Another thing that I gave you is our Hope for Venezuela card. Um, I'm going to be talking about a little bit more about that because one of the resources that Girls Ministries has um, is missions. We have a missions emphasis that gets kids excited about giving to mission, provides you resources. Um, um, and then also I just gave you guys a brochure that is just about girls' ministries. Um, it goes over all of the things that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, I'll actually be doing more than what the brochure says. But on the back of the brochure, just in case you lose your notes or if you do like I do and you file your notes away for future reference and then they don't ever get opened back up until you know, you clean your office. Um, so on the back of the brochure is the website. And the website that I'm going to be accessing today is www.ngm, okay, that's N as in national, G as in girls, M as in ministries, .ag.org. This is the Girls Ministries website. I have it up here on the screen. Um, there are some resources on here that are just so much fun and absolutely fantastic. So I want to make sure that I don't... Um, forget which ones I'm supposed to be telling you guys about. So let me get my notes. Okay, um, the first thing that I want to show you guys, and this one, um, unfortunately, does not have a direct link. So, oh, foo. Oh, yay. Okay, there we go. Um, if you go on the main page and come down here to New Devotional for Young Families Offered, I'm going to click on that. I'm just showing you how to get there, then I'll tell you what it is. Then you come down to the bottom of the page and it says for more information or to download, um, click here. Click on that. What this is, is the Girls Ministries Department has come to the realization that when we have girls in our church, we are not just ministering to those girls. A lot of our girls have brothers. Okay, hopefully all of our girls have parents or some other significant adult that um, is, is part of their life. Sorry. Um, so they come up with what they call family faith devotions. These are devotions for the entire family, not just for, um, not just for the girls. Um, this one, there are 12 different ones, so you could use these for a whole year. Uh, they kind of, originally they were dated by like month. So let me show you how this works. Um, Thankfulness, the, the, the months kind of go with the theme for the month. So the supernatural was the theme for, anybody guess? October, there we go. Thankfulness is the one for November. They are four to five week devotions um, that, depending on kind of the length of the month, um, that have to do with that theme. So if I were to go into the thankfulness, just click on that image there. It's going to bring up a PDF that you can print for your, to give to your families. We've been doing this for a couple of months. It's kind of fun um, to give these to our families. And it just kind of gives you a chance to get some conversation starters. What is the focus? The first week focus for thankfulness is we can thank God for many things. And then there's a little, inf little um, devotion that you can do. There's a little activity and then a prayer. And there's one of these for every week. Now, as much as we would love for our families to do devotions every single day, we know that life gets busy. And that's not always going to be practical. 
So if you don't currently have in your church a devotion plan to send home with your families, a lot of our families, especially if we have new believers as parents, they want to be doing devotions with their kids. They have no clue where to start. You can go to the bookstore, you can go to a Christian bookstore, you can go to one of the mass chain bookstores, and there's going to be so many options that families don't know where to start a lot of times. This can be a great starting point. It's once a week, it's very non-threatening, and there's one for every month of the year. Um, at this point, there are only one, there's only one year worth, but um, it gets you guys started and gets the families in a habit of working on devotions together. Let's see. So there are 12 different ones. Um, and next month, obviously, is Christmas. So we're talking about Jesus' birth. Um, these are great, like I said, for the whole family. Because when we're ministering to girls, we've heard it all throughout the weekend, we are ministering to the whole family when we're ministering to kids. Um, the other thing, the next thing I want to show you um, over here on the right or the left hand side is um, you'll see some different shortcuts, some different links. This one right here, Impact for Girls. Our kids are so technologically savvy. My six year old can operate my iPhone better than I can, and I think I'm pretty tech savvy. He figured out my daughter's password <laughs> before I did. So we have. The kid is smart. These kids are they're surrounded by technology. They love any excuse to get on the computer. They love any excuse to get on your smartphone or your tablet or any electronic device they can. But there's a lot of stuff out there we don't want them to see. So trying to find safe places for our kids to go is important. And this is something that the Girls Ministries Department, this, I'm going to click on the Impact for Girls icon on the left-hand side of the page. This is a website just for girls. It has all the fun stuff that girls love. It has quizzes. Do you guys remember being teenagers and getting out the magazine and you couldn't wait to take the quiz, no matter how stupid it was? Even if it was what's your dog personality type, you didn't care. You wanted to take the quiz. So we have on here, there's some quizzes. Um, the quiz for this one is do your respect... Yeah, okay, Nick. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, I remember there are guys who do this, too. We have quizzes. There are activities, recipes, um, things like that. Games with Luna. I'm going to tell you who Luna is in just a moment because she is very important. Girl talk. So there's a question. I'm the youngest in my family, and sometimes I feel like my mom loves the others more than me. Sometimes my sisters pick on me just because they're older. What should I do? And so it's, it, it, when you click on that, it gives you some suggestions. There's also some mission stuff on here. And let me tell you about the missions um, part of it. There's missions adventures. If you click on this here, it takes you to a page. Where they can learn about some other countries. Let me tell you what that has to do with girls' ministries. Girls' ministries has developed a missions arm, a giving arm of BGMC called Coins for Kids. Now, here's the good news. If your church gives to BGMC, Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge, and your children's pastor or you yourself have a certain goal for BGMC, Coins for Kids goes to BGMC. So if you want to have your girls in your church work to a specific ministry project to help out missionaries, they are also contributing to your church's giving goal for BGMC. The way it was described to me is BGMC is like a house, coins for kids, and master's toolbox with Royal Rangers are rooms within that house. They all give towards that. So if you have ever had your children's pastor say, well, we don't want you to focus on this other missions thing because we have this goal for BGMC. Then that's a perfect opportunity to go, well, I'd love to help you with that goal for BGMC by telling the girls about this missions project. Every year, the national team um, in Springfield finds a missionary project, something that missionaries cannot do with their current giving, the current um, amount that they are funded, a big project. This year, um, on your, on your um, chair, you have the, uh, the Coins for Kids card. This year for 2013, the giving project is Hope for Venezuela. Um, it is, the project is we're trying to raise enough money to build a school for Samuel's house, which is a home that missionaries 
in Venezuela um, have started to get kids off the street and help them to grow and be productive in life. So the kids learn responsibility. It's not just an orphanage where you come and you get food and clothing and they learn responsibility, they have chores, they go to school, they learn a skill. The goal of Samuel's house is to take a kid from the time they can pull him in off the streets and graduate them from college. It is not just let's take care of them temporarily and then they're on their own. It is to, to, to make sure they are set up for life and that, the, and that they are experiencing the Lord. Um, so they need a school because right now their kids have to go to school in shifts. Um, the local school is not big enough to handle their kids. Um, and, you know, in countries unlike America where there is mandatory education, you have to be there. Nobody cares if these kids show up to school or not, which is very sad. So they're trying to build a school at Samuel's house, not only for the children that are in Samuel's house, but also the children in the community who really need to be loved on. Um, and so our kids have been raising money all year around the network and around the, the nation, have been raising money to provide the, the materials for a school for Samuel's house. Um, every year, there's a different project. Last year, we raised money to build a camp in Alaska that did not have any permanent anything. They had to boat in a tent every year and they had to boat in tents for the kids and I mean all this kind of stuff. So they, are, they, built, they raised money for a permanent structure at this camp for these kids. Um, great projects that missionaries just can't do with their monthly giving that they're given. Um, Luna the Lamb, I showed you here games with Luna. Um, Luna the lamb is a little mascot. You know, girls love cute little fluffy things. Um, Luna the lamb is the mascot for Coins for Kids. So you'll see her in a lot of places that have to do with missions. So there's some games that have to do with missions, um, crossword puzzles, all that kind of stuff that are available on that Impact for Girls website. So this is just for girls. It's a safe place for your girls to go. Now on this website, one of the things that I absolutely love is where it says, Impact for Girls Daybook. I'm going to click on that right here. This is a devotion just for girls. It is a monthly devotion. It goes Monday through Friday. They put a new one up every month. Every week has a, a, a theme. And then all of the devotions for that week go with that theme. These devotions are bite-sized and they're something the kids can do on their own. They don't necessarily have to have parent involvement. It's just a brief time they can spend with the Lord to get them in the habit of doing that. This is for any girl. It has nothing to do with whether you have clubs or not. This is for any girl. So um, for, they, they get posted every month, and there is a verse for them to look up and some sort of application for that verse. It might be just writing something in a journal. It might be having a discussion with a parent. It might be actually doing something. Um, September there was a thing on respect and showing love for others and the action step was hold the door open for someone today you know and it's just it's things that make the girls think about getting out there and being in the word and and what do these things mean so these are updated every month and when I get noticed that they're they're live normally they try to get them up before the end of the month but sometimes they get a little hectic I know everything is a little hectic and doesn't get posted until the first or second day of the month. So as soon as I get notification that these are live on the, on the National Girls Ministries website, I put the information on the Facebook page um, so that you guys can see them. Do you have a question? Okay. Do they line up at all with the family ones or do they completely? It's completely different. It's something for the girls to do on their own, regardless of whether or not the parents are doing the other. <laughs> no, no, there's a different theme every week. Yeah, the question was, um, do the day books line up with the family talk devotion or family faith devotions? And no, they're two separate, two separate things. These are something for the girls to do on their own. I'm actually, if anybody knows me, I'm looking for something for boys that does the same thing. Um, because I just think this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. Um, and then you can even go back. They have all of their day books archived. So you can go back and see what they've done in the past. Um, and it's downloadable PDF, so you just click on it, you can print it off um, for your kids. Yeah, very, very cool. Lots of fun stuff that they can do on here. Those ones are geared toward elementary. I'm gonna show you one in just a moment for teen girls. Um, okay, 
So that's the website daybook. Oh, coins for I'm going to go back to coins for kids for a moment. Um, sorry, I have a tendency to jump around when I get excited. Um, so hopefully I can stay on task. Hello. It's always different using somebody else's computer. Okay. Um, with the hope for Venezuela, every year we have a project. Sorry, you're just in like my path here. Um, the project every year, we try to give you resources to educate your girls about this. So the little paper, can I borrow your paper? I kind of gave all mine out. Um, these cards that I handed you guys, these are available from Gospel Publishing House. They are completely free. BGMC um, has partnered with us because, well, we're supporting them, right? Um, and they provide these to our churches for free. We also have cute little boxes, like offering boxes, as you can order completely free for your girls. One of the, um, the biggest event that we have all year is called Sleepover. Um, that is put done, there's a packet of resources put out by the national office. It's mailed to churches that have clubs. Um, if you don't have a club, the packet is available online. It's usually available online about by April-ish. Um, there's a national sleepover date. Uh, the end of September is when the national sleepover is held, but you don't necessarily have to do it that date. For those of you who don't know what sleepover is, sleepover is an event to promote your, what you're doing in your church for girls and to promote the missions project for the year. So what they have... Um, earlier in the year they have when you would click on this little logo they would have the video and all of that kind of stuff so let me see if I can get oh no maybe not <laughs> sorry let's figure out where they oh we'll go over here preschool and elementary no sorry events and evangelism um, if you go down to nationwide sleepover we have various sleepover themes that have been throughout the last few years. The theme for the year goes with the project. So this year's theme was Carnival, um, and it came from Carnival in Venezuela. And so all of the, they, what they do is they provide a packet of materials that has games, it has snacks, crafts, devotions, um, everything that you need to do an event for your girls to promote missions and get girls excited about coming to your church. Even if you just want to get them excited about coming on Sunday mornings, this would be a great event to have kids invite their friends, come learn about missions, learn who Jesus is. There's a great opportunity here to give a gospel presentation in this sleepover and then invite them to come back and be a part of your church. And so all of the information, they have it all available online so that you can print out just what you need um, and have just what you need for that. They also have it, I have an iPad, so I always take the PDF. Just a, a, a tip, I don't know if you guys knew this, if you have an, an iPad or an iDevice, um, you can just open up the PDF and then tell it to open it in iBooks and it'll save it to your device. Did you guys know you could do that? It's pretty cool because then it's always right there where you need it and you don't have to print it out and waste paper or lose it like I usually do. Um, <laughs> so all the information is on there. This is a great opportunity to promote missions with your kids. The really neat thing about this is most of the themes that they do, there was the year it was a tea party, so that was not very boy friendly, but most of the themes that they do can be adapted to have your boys come as well. Um, for at least an event, maybe a few hours, obviously not a sleepover, mm -hmm. um, unless you want to se separate them and you're that brave. Um, I don't know if I want to spend the whole night with that many boys, <laughs> personally. Um, that's just me. Um, so there are, there are um, ideas in here for you to be able to put on an event. We've actually had this event in the past where our rainbows, our three, three four, and five-year-olds, um, we have obviously boys in there. It's not just girls in our church. Um, and so we had an event a couple of years ago where we said, hey, we want the rainbows to come for the first two hours 
of our event. And we planned some of the higher, the, the higher energy games and the missions emphasis and things like that um, for that time. And then the younger kids and the boys were able to come enjoy that with us. Um, and that's just an opportunity to reach out to the whole family um, in that situation. Um, any questions about anything so far? I know I'm going really fast. I'm sorry. Any questions, comments? OK. So uh, sleepover packet, it's new every year. And there's some previous ones on there. So if you wanted to um, do something differently or have some ideas for an event, I love being able to find events that are already pre-planned for me. And all I have to do is execute it. I mean, how easy is that, right? All the crafts, you don't have to go searching for the crafts. You don't have to go searching for what games to do. You don't have to go searching for what food goes with this. It's all right there. So you can go back and do any of those at any time, which is a lot of fun. Um, OK. So what I probably should have started with is um, some of the things that Girls Ministries is about. Um, like I said, it's not just about the clubs. We are very highly into resourcing churches to be able to minister to girls, regardless of, of um, what you're doing for them already, being able to help you do that. Leadership development, um, training materials, activities, parent, involve, or parent enrichment. We have a lot of parents in our culture that never learned how to be parents. And they're looking for resources. So we have a couple things here under um, parent enrichment. This is another way that you can get to the Family Faith Devotions. That's actually a link right there, that picture. And then there are also some other devotions and some other things for parents here. Our parents, the thing is if our kids are dealing with things that we didn't have to deal with, we as parents didn't deal with that. And so we don't know exactly how to help our kids deal with some of that. Um, and so there's here um, some different ideas for parents, some different little devotions, um, helpful resources. Then we also have specifically for parents of teen girls, we have another area that kind of tells you about what teens face. Now I know here we're dealing mostly with children, but if you're anything like me, you've watched the girls in your church grow through your ministry, and now they're in youth ministry, and they still come back to you for certain things because you were there at a vital time in their life. And so once they leave your ministry, whether it's fifth grade or sixth grade, however your church works, you're not done with them. Ministry continues even if they're too cool for you eventually they're they could be coming back to you and looking for resources so some of these things are interesting to know um, challenges faced by young people at the time of this in 2007 Barna revealed that 42 percent of children are challenged um, by peer pressure <coughs> Uh, Sixteen percent are worried about performance in school. Sixteen percent are dealing with substance abuse. Behavioral issues, fifteen percent. Okay, um, and then challenges related to faith. There are a small percentage of those people of, of those kids. We want to make sure that we are ministering to our girls from the time that we get our hands on their hearts until forever, really. We want to just continue. Um, it gives you kind of, for parents of teen girls, this right here, um, it talks a little bit about what our deal, what our kids dealing with, what um, are our kids um, doing, and what do we need to be aware of as parents. So that is on there. Parent enrichment is a big part. Events and evangelism I talked a little bit about. That's a coins for kids. Um, and the way that we are able to get out the word about missions. Um, preschool and elementary here. The Impact for Girls website you can also find right here. There's some information and stuff if you do have girls clubs. Leadership development. I want to talk about that before I talk about teen girl ministries. Um, what time am I supposed to be done in here? Does anybody know? All right, I have like six minutes. Okay. Um, let me talk about the last two things. Let me talk about leadership development and um, teen girl ministries. 
We all, as leaders, regardless of what area we're in, want to be better at what we do, right? We don't kind of come into it and go, you know what, I am good enough to do anything that the church asks me to do because I am awesome. <laughs> we all come in here going, really, God, you want me to do what? You sure I can handle this? And so I am constantly looking for ways to enrich myself, to enrich my team. Um, the Girls Ministries Department has put out something called Momentum Leadership Development Units. These used to actually be called Michonette's Leadership Development Units. But what happened is several organizations outside of the Girls Ministries Department came to them and said, hey, you know what, that's really good stuff. Can you take your name off of it so we can use it? And so it's what they did. They changed it to Momentum Leadership Development Units. There are three different ones. Um, the bronze level is personal growth. Oh, sorry. Bronze level is education. Gold level is personal growth. And the silver level is community. If you are involved in girls' ministries, these can be taken, or in girls' clubs, these can be taken as additional training and you can get awards and stuff for it. But these are great even if you're not. Um, the bronze one and education deals with children with special needs or disabilities, the dynamics of mentoring and understanding learning styles. These are amazing if you're working with children in any way, shape, or form. The silver is community and it deals with blending the generations. If you have kids in your church, you probably also have older people in your church. How do you get those dynamics to mesh. The world in your classroom and community outreach are all parts of the silver um, there. And then the personal growth is about you. And it is managing conflict. I know none of you here have conflict, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, living what you've learned and building a biblical worldview. So these are available. Um, this is one of the resources I'm going to show you that's not free, sorry. Um, this is available from Gospel Publishing. Um, and they are only $10. The book is $10. Um, if you want to, you can take the test. There's a test in the middle. You can take it, send it into the National Girls Ministry Department and get a cool little certificate that says you completed it. But really, for personal growth, these are amazing. Um, it's the Momentum Leadership Development Units. Yes? Um, are they kind of like a curriculum kind of for your leaders? Your leaders or how do you... Like, is it like a more individual thing? Like if we wanted to do like a small group with our leaders, mm -hmm. use one of those as kind of like... Okay. The question was: could, Is this a curriculum, or is this a personal, um, a personal thing? Every, if you did it as a small group, everyone would need their own book. Okay. And so, what you would do is go through it together. It's like a workbook. All of the materials, all of the curriculum that um, Girls Ministries puts out has these fun little sidebars that have questions. It's like your workbook within your textbook. And so everyone would need their own copy of this. And it all the, like the follow-up questions would be in here, notes for you to write. Every, this would be your own, everybody's own personal workbook and textbook. And so you could do it as a group. There's not necessarily a leader manual. Um, there is the option to have myself or someone else come in and do the training and do it as a group. Um, that is possible, um, but this, is, this would be something everybody in your group needs. They each need their own book. Yes? Is it only for girls, or can we also use it for ministry? Okay. The question was, is it only for girls? It is actually for anyone in ministry, period. Um, that's why they took the, the Mishnet's name off of it, um, because it is something that is so well written and it applies to everybody. Yes? Is it $10 a book or for all three? It is $10 per book. Yeah. Okay. So these are great. So if you want to come look through them, I'll have them up here. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show you is um, the teen girl ministries. Like I said, I know most of you in here work with children, but um, we do come into access into contact with teens. And sometimes our parents will come to us and just say, "Hey, if we're doing, you know, if we're doing a great job with their girl, their younger girls, they'll come and say, "Hey, do you know of any resources to help me deal with this or to help my kids deal with that?" Um, teen girl ministries, TGM, um, they actually are a a branch of girls ministries and they have some amazing resources two of them um, three of them I want to show you today what four sorry there's a lot um, real quick teen girl retreat 
just like the sleepover packet that I told you guys about to have an event for your elementary age kids, um, specifically girls, there is a packet already put together, pre-planned for you to do, or someone in your church to do a retreat for your teen girls. Um, they are done in such a way that you can pick if you want it to be a one-day event or a three-day event. Um, so you have options with that. They actually give you suggested schedules for various ways of doing that event. And so these are the packets are available online, completely free. Um, they have, I think, about four or five of them done. This year, or the 2012 packet was lost and found. Um, the older packets, we have Letters to Myself, Sacred, and Inside Out. So there are four different packets available to do a retreat for your teen girls. Um, the day book that I showed you guys earlier for the elementary girls, there is a teen girl day book on the TGM page. This is geared more for your middle schoolers and high schoolers. Same format, there's a verse. The verses are the same, the themes are the same as the elementary girls. The application is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's going to be a, a little deeper, a little more age appropriate. Um, and we have all of the old ones there. So the teen girl day book is available. It is the teenage version of the um, impact day book. Hot topics. These are amazing. Girls, I, I want to put a special emphasis on this. Some of our upper elementary girls are facing stuff that we didn't have to deal with until we got out of high school. And so these are geared for the teenagers but there may be someone in your church that is upper elementary that is already dealing with this stuff. It deals with abuse, alternative lifestyles, bullying, creation versus evolution. What these are, I'm going to just pick on, uh, not pick on, I'm going <laughs> just I'm going to pick bullying. Um, this would come with two pages. One page, is the one page is a leader guide. The leader guide has everything the student guide has on it with some extra notes. So notes to leaders on this one. Um, it tells you kind of something about what you need to know about this topic before you talk to your girls about it. And then we have the uh, basically a short devotion. It's a chance to look at God's word together and then discuss what does it have to do with this subject that we're talking about. And then the second page of this is the page for the teens. And it has all that content that's on the leader guide except for the leader notes. These are great if you have a situation where you overhear some girls talking or someone comes up and says, you know, hey, I have this problem with this. You can just go see if there's, if there's a hot topic having to do with that. Print that off and have a small group study with them or have one-on-one -on -one, or give it to their parents to help them um, to be able to address that topic. These are absolutely fantastic. Like I said, they are geared for, um, for, for teenagers, but so many of our girls are dealing with stuff younger and younger. Um, and the last thing I want to show you, this is really cool. Um, this is one of the things that they've actually stopped updating, but I want to tell you about it because it's just so stinking cool. Um, teen girl magazines are a lot of fun. Unfortunately, most of what's on the newsstand as you're checking out is junk. It's all about the hottest new star, and it's not even like how great they are, it's how gorgeous they looked in something, or uh, it's just weird. Um, so <laughs> we want our girls to be able to have the experience of um, the Teen Girl magazine without all the junk in it. So what they did is um, the National Girls Ministry staff had a young woman on their staff that she had a background in web design and publishing and all that kind of stuff. So she put together these, it's called Peristeria. I know that's a really weird word. It actually means white lily. Um, and it is a online magazine for teen girls. Um, the last issue they did is summer 2013, which is when the lady who was doing these had her baby and decided to stay home. Um, <laughs> but they have archived here the last year and a half or so, a um, couple years of, of these. They put them out quarterly. They deal with fashion. They deal, there's recipes in there. There's quizzes. Um, there are articles about things our girls are facing. Um, there are, there was, it was a really neat article in one of these about some girls who, when they got ready to go to prom, they could not find modest prom dresses that they liked. So this group of girls got together. They bought the dresses they liked that were um, strapless. They didn't feel comfortable in that. So they went out and found fabric 
that matched their dresses and made these cute little like sleeves but it was the whole article is about modesty and how we can be modest in a culture that wants you to not be be modest um, all sorts of different things there's, there's an article in one about um, getting ready for college these you can um, look at them directly online um, let me see actually might not be yeah so the high res here you can look at it online and just just look at it online but if you click on the low res it comes up as a PDF um, which like I said can be saved to a device um, in PDF format so you can just keep it on there these are just a lot of fun for your girls um, especially your older girls if you do have you know fifth sixth graders that are getting into fashion and trends and all that kind of fun stuff um, there's a lot of really cool stuff on here um, and like I said they're not updating anymore because unfortunately that young lady uh, well fortunately I, I you know you got to be happy for them when, when good things happen but it's like we miss her being in the national office um, that, but it's, it's a, just a great way to get your girls into something and it's uh, even though they're not updating them anymore it's still more modern than the magazine sitting in your doctor's office right <laughs> so um, so those are just some of the things that are available. Hopefully you found something today that you can use in your church.